after. There we go. Hello and welcome to um, Encompass Live. We are back finally after a longer than expected hiatus. <laughs> um, this is Krista Burns at the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, we are back with Encompass Live here on August 12th and with a new system that we are using and hopefully it will be um, easy for everyone who is attending and presenting. Um, Encompass Live is our Nebraska Library Commission's weekly online event that we do here um, every Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Central Time. It is free. You can um, just sign up on our website to attend any sessions um, and it is recorded. So if you are not able to attend the live session, you can listen to the recording that we're doing right now. Um, this morning we are going to teach you all about Twitter. Um, <laughs> Or Michael, as much as we can in an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Sowers, our technology innovation librarian here at the commission, is going to do that for you. So um, go ahead and take it away. All right. Thanks, Krista. Um, so let's see here. We need to switch over to, um, I'm going to switch over to my browser. Give me one sec, and that probably just showed up in the recording, but that's okay. Yeah, that's all right. We are going to talk about Twitter today. This has been um, quite an interesting little piece of technology. Um, many of you, I don't know how many of you are already using it, maybe looking for some extra tips, but my assumption is that most of you have gone, I've heard of it, I don't get it, why should I care? This, <laughs> this seems to be whenever I get in front of an audience and mention Twitter that, that uh, I get one or the other. Love it, or what is it? Twitter it was, is a uh, web service that was started by a couple of guys who also started Blogger. Uh, one of those two guys is Ev Williams, and he is uh, actually from Nebraska originally. So, okay, yes, yes, we can uh, mention that, that there is a Nebraska connection to Twitter. And Twitter is designed as a service that has become known as microblogging. The um, idea behind blogging was to share your thoughts, your feelings, um, in a, um, a text-based format, and usually blogs tend to, people write lots of verbiage, uh, paragraphs, sentences, um, all sorts of things. It tends to be longer form sort of content. Twitter is um, kind of like blogging, but you, in each post, you're limited to 140 characters, and that's it. So micro-blogging. Um, the original question that was on the Twitter homepage, which I'm showing you right now, was what are you doing now? And that actually was uh, there for the last year or so until just a couple of weeks ago when they completely changed their homepage around uh, and announced to share and discover what's happening right now anywhere in the world. And what they're, they're kind of doing here on this home screen is they're focusing on the ability to search all of the content that people are putting into Twitter. Um, but we will get back to that. What I'm going to start with is focusing on the actual uh, setting up account, um, how you can use it, what are the features, why should you care, that sort of thing. The one thing I want to say before we get uh, into it too much is that Twitter is meant to be kind of a giant conversation. Yes, you might have heard of Twitter and you might be saying to yourself, okay, great, so person X is blogging what they had for breakfast this morning on Twitter. Okay, they used to write an essay about it. Now they just say, I'm having Cheerios with a banana um, because that can fit in 140 characters. Well, it's an interesting concept. I, I completely agree with you that in most cases I probably wouldn't agree that that would be an interesting piece of information. However, it's only not interesting to me is because I don't care about what that person is saying. Yes, that person is saying what they had for breakfast, but they're not talking to me necessarily. They're talking to the people who follow them. Okay? Um, I follow people and I might be interested in what they had for breakfast. I might not on some days. Other people follow me. They might be interested in what I'm saying. That doesn't mean you're going to be interested in what I'm saying or any other particular person was saying. Another way you can look at it is imagine if you are in, uh, you know, you're in Grand Central Station and everybody's talking to everybody else, and imagine that you could actually hear and understand what everybody was saying all at the same time. That's kind of like Twitter. Well, you don't, you wouldn't want that because you don't care what just about everybody is saying in Grand Central Station except maybe that person standing next to you. That's your friend, that's a, that's a member of your family. You do care what, what uh, they have to say. So you do need to learn to kind of filter the content that you get through Twitter to actually make it work for you. And I'll show some of the ways that I've personally done that with my account. 
Now, the first thing most of you would want to do if you haven't already is actually sign up for an account. And you can do that by clicking on the sign up now. This is probably one of the simplest sign up forms in the world. Uh, you enter your name, you pick a username, a password, put in your email, and then type in the CAPTCHA down there to prove that you're a human being. And then you create my account. And that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do. So it's maybe a 30 second process. Probably the hardest part will be picking your username, uh, just because you gotta make sure you haven't picked one somebody else has picked, okay? So what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna go ahead and sign into my account here, which I also could have done from the homepage. And my username is M Sowers, and my password. I'm not gonna tell you that. Yeah, I will not say out loud. <laughs> And uh, I can have it remember me, but since the computer I'm sitting on isn't my computer, I'm not going to have it do that. I'm going to go ahead and click sign in. And no, please, Firefox, don't remember my password. And what we have here is my Twitter homepage. Now, I have customized this a bit, okay? Um, and I do realize that on this screen, because of the sharing and the size of the screen we're on, kind of the content down the middle is kind of overlapping the graphics I have on the background. Um, that We're not gonna concern ourselves too much with that at the moment. Once you have an account, there's a few things I wanna go in and, and tell you about before we actually get to this whole thing about posting uh, with Twitter and following people and things like that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this profile link up at the top. And that profile link is going to take me to um, actually not the page I expected, I will be completely honest. Um, that's actually taking me to the post things that I've made recently. So we're going to come back to that. What I wanted is settings. Yes. Okay, here we go. I've been reading a lot of books that people have written lately about Twitter and, and recommendations. And the one I was reading yesterday actually said, really, you should go through and set up all these settings before you start posting anything. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really good advice because this is how you customize your account and how you kind of make it yours. And you really want to make your account yours before you start putting your thoughts out there for other people to read and possibly trying to attract people to, to reading your content. So we have right here on the account, um, you will have your name and your username and your email address will already be there from signing up for your account. You will want to change your time zone. Make sure that's accurate because it does keep track of when you post things. Um, if you have a URL, so if you have a, a personal blog you want to link people back to, or if you're setting up an account for the library, you can put in the library's URL. Um, you get a one-line bio. You get 160 characters to describe yourself. A little longer than a tweet. <laughs> yeah, a little longer than a tweet, but not much. So you really want to think about that carefully. And usually what, what again, this book that I was reading recommended was list like writer, blogger, reader, librarian, loves Star Wars. You know, kind of pick a couple of words that describe you and then say something that you like or enjoy on, on, on top of that. And usually you can kind of fit that into 160 characters. Um, you do want to mention where you are physically in most cases. Um, Twitter is location aware. So you can do things like search for people who have tweeted from Lincoln, Nebraska or from Omaha or whatnot. Um, what language would you be uh, using Twitter in? I'm going to assume English for most of us. Um, and then protect my tweets. Now, this is a little interesting. There are some privacy features here. Not a lot, but this is pretty much it. Um, right now, since that box for me is not checked, what that means is anybody who comes to Twitter, whether they have an account or not, whether they follow me or a friend of mine or not, can read what I have posted. If I check protect my tweets, what that will do is that only people I approve will be able to read my tweets. So if you're maybe, you know, not comfortable with it at first, you might want to protect it. Um, if you just want to, you know, tweet with your immediately immediate family and friends, you might want to protect it. Um, however, if you're, say, setting up an account for the library, don't protect your tweets, okay? You, that, that people will just frown upon that because... It defeats the purpose. Yeah, it defeats the purpose. You want anybody to be able to find the content, say, from the library. Now, I have a question. I'm not sure if you know this or not. Sure. Is that by default checked or no? I, that's a very good question, and I don't I remember. remember. <laughs> so yeah. Look at it to see. Yes, yeah, this, this I'm is. Not sure what it's by default. This is why you want to check through these settings yeah. before you actually start, you know, actually doing any work. Um, you have a password tab. You can go ahead and change your password here if you wish to do so. Um, you then have devices. This is where things get a little more interesting. You can actually hook your Twitter account to your cell phone. And then you can post to Twitter, 
and you can receive tweets via text messaging on your phone. Okay. Now, eventually, you, as interesting as this might sound to you, you need to be very careful with it because you can receive every single tweet via text message. And I've heard of people who get so many tweets because they follow so many people um, that they can never make a phone call because they're constantly getting text messages. And if you have to pay for that on your cell phone plan? Exactly. You know, any tweet you send via text message or any you receive, if you don't have an unlimited plan for text messaging, you know, you're going to be paying for that. So I have set up my phone there. There you now all have my cell phone number. Um, that's all right. Uh, I, I live dangerously. I can now send tweets from my phone, which I do periodically. Um, I can then also on a case-by-case -case basis have certain accounts send me tweets to my phone. And then I've also set there, please, by the way, do not send me any tweets between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. because I kind of want to sleep. Okay. Um, notices will um, set up the ability to notify you about things about your account via email. I really like these. Um, if somebody sends me a direct message, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, I'll get a copy in my email because I might not always be on Twitter. Um, if somebody starts following me, I will get an email because I might not always be on Twitter. In fact, actually, if you're on Twitter, there's no real way to know that. The only way you can know that somebody's no. follow you is if you check this, no, yeah. uh, send me an email. Because your Twitter so, itself does not go. do that, no. Exactly. Um, picture. You do want to upload a picture of yourself. There's my little picture there, my little avatar guy. Um, the funny part of that story is I was actually wearing that outfit on the day <laughs> I created that avatar. I do have that Hawaiian shirt and tan pants. Um, and so you could have a, a small photograph of yourself, a logo, uh, image. Um, my general recommendation is, even if you use a cartoon, stick to an image of yourself. I mean, you really make it personal. Uh, make it a representation of you that looks like a person. Um, some people will tend to use symbols or logos. Um, Chris, I think, do you, you use, did you use a um, bat symbol for a while? I've used various things, yes. Oh, that, but it is a picture of you now. It is now my picture. Okay. I had at one point, um... <clears throat> I had the Bat logo because um, I was in this Batgirl phase because Batgirl was a librarian. Um, and when it was um, Talk Like a Pirate Day, they, I changed it to a little pirate logo for fun, but then change it back. Some people do things like that where they change their logo for certain events um, to support certain events. Sure. They say, you know, color it a certain Good color, point. and that shows that you are supporting whatever political thing that's going on. Um, so, and right here you can very easily do that mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Um, but it's good to like, yeah, if you're doing your own personal Twitter account, having something that shows that it's you and then people who maybe who have seen you in person know, oh yeah, that's so-and-so, I remember them. Or when they do see you, they can match up with, oh, you're the one I follow that said right. those things, so I saw your face on your Twitter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, if you're doing it for your library and you're, you're Twittering as you know, so-and-so public library, you might not want your face, you might want the library's logo or a picture of the library, of the logo, yes. of the library. so it's going to depend on mm -hmm. what your purpose of that account okay. is. But one thing I want to stress, regardless of all this, those are very good points, is you will get a default icon, which is basically a couple of circles and a brown square, and you really need to change that. Um, I follow a lot of people, and every once in a while, I need to weed, and I am not the only person who does this. One of the, the things I'll generally look at is, has the person bothered to change their icon? Um, because, you know, if you haven't bothered to change your icon, you might not be taking this too seriously. You, you know, you might not really be into it. Um, so that is something I would actually consider in, in deciding whether to follow people or not. And going back to the account information where you enter information about yourself in the um, bio, one line bio, and the URL and location, there are some people who and you'll see, you'll see this, people talking about it on Twitter, who say, if you don't have a bio that tells me who you are and you start following me, I'm not following you back and I'm going to block you. Mm -hmm. If I don't know who the heck you are or why you're here or why you're online at all, I have no, no reason to pay attention to you at all. So sure. it's very important, as Michael said in the beginning, first thing you do before you even start Twittering, before you even start following other people, go in here and get this stuff set up because if you don't have stuff in there, there are certain people that just by default because you have not entered anything will immediately block you and you've destroyed the whole experience sure. for yourself. Yay! Um, the last tab, I'm not going to talk about the connections tab today in the interest of time, but design, 
Um, this is where you can change the background of your Twitter page, and you'll notice that there are some built-in ones here. You can change your color scheme. What I've actually done is I've uploaded my own background picture, which is that where you can see a book cover and my name down the left-hand side. Basically what you're doing is you're setting up a wallpaper for your Twitter page. Um, so you can customize your own. There are templates. If you go to Google and search on you know, Twitter backgrounds, you'll find free ones that people have created. You've got some built-in ones here that you can pick. So if you don't like the generic blue, which I think this one is the default one, um, you can change it to some of these others. And you would just click, you know, uh, you can select one of these by clicking. You can change your background image. That will take you to a screen where you can upload your own. You can change the colors. I'm not actually going to change mine, although I'm thinking about doing it. I'm, I, I'm thinking I'm, I'm getting it. Yeah, it's been this way for about six months, and I'm thinking maybe I need to, to, to change it just a little bit. And I will point out real quick that at the bottom of each one of these screens was a Save Changes button. Please make sure when you change any of this stuff, you click on Save Changes. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go back home, and this is my home Twitter page. Now, you will see over to the right-hand side uh, that we have some basic information. There's my logo, or my icon, and my username. I am following 403 people. Um, I have 1,086 people following me, which means they're reading what I'm posting. The people I'm following means I'm reading what they're posting. And I, so far, have posted 8,878 tweets. Kind of have a little uh, tidbit about uh, Twitter here. And then you have some links and the search bar and save searches, which we'll come back to in a little bit. So what we've got right here down the middle white section is these are all of the people that I'm following. And these, so this is what they have posted recently. And you can see that this was posted less than 20 seconds ago, half a minute ago, less than a minute ago, one minute ago. And you scroll on down and the newest ones are on the top. Okay, so these are all folks that I'm following, and these are people literally from all over the world. And we're gonna, we're, there's, there's Yap here. He's in um, um, Denmark. Denmark. Yeah, he's in, he's in the Netherlands. So we're actually gonna put that to the test. And all, all going all the way back to Mr. Wilson is right here and, in Lincoln. Yeah, that's that's right. <laughs> yes, <laughs> pound L and K. Um, we'll talk about that pound symbol in a moment. So I'm gonna answer the question: What are you doing? So I'm presenting Twitter to Nebraska librarians. Hey, Twitter friends, please give a shout out from wherever you are. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and type that. And you'll notice over here on the right, it's, it's uh, 33 characters left. So I am under my 140 character limit. If you go over, it will turn bright red and will not let you click that update button. So I'm going to go ahead and click update, and that's going to send out. And notice now this is in my Twitter stream because it's the people I'm reading and me. Okay? And we'll even say latest. This is what I posted most recently and when I posted it. Okay? So we're going to give that a few minutes. We're going to come back to that in a second. This is home. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on my username in the upper right-hand corner. And this page, and this was also if I had clicked on profile up at the top, which I did accidentally a few minutes ago, this is now just the list of tweets that I have posted. So it's not my stream, it's just the ones that I've posted. And I can do several things for these, including delete them if I so wish to do so. Every once in a while you post something up there and you kind of go, oh, you know, I, I really, really misspelled something. Um, the meaning got totally lost. Um, you can delete it, but I gotta say, I can go back 8,000 almost and, and delete really, really old ones, but that doesn't mean nobody else has read them. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, if you're gonna delete a tweet, delete pretty quickly. So I'm gonna then go back home and let's see if anybody has responded yet. And there we go, we've already gotten uh, three, uh, two direct responses. Uh, oh, actually, one direct response. We have Info Bunny. Uh, her name is Bunny, and I'm the sheriff around here, as you were. Um, she didn't actually say where she's from. So this is one new tweet. And what's going on here, where it says here, at M. Sowers, it's basically saying, I am replying to you, or she is replying to me. If I wanted to reply to her, I could just type it up here, or if you notice this little arrow kind of appears here, I can click that. Notice automatically it changes to reply to info bunny and it says at info bunny and I can say where are you located 
I can't type and talk at the same time. You'd think after 15 years of doing this, I would have gotten that skill. But anyway, so now, now notice it says reply because I'm writing a reply. So it's kind of like chat. You know, if you can do chat, you can also do Twitter. So we'll go ahead and hit reply. Now, what Bill has done, and he's in New York somewhere. Yeah, this is very convenient. I like how this is working out. Notice uh, this says RT. What's going on there is he is retweeting something. In other words, he saw something that a, an account called Mashable posted, and he wanted to pass that along to the people that read him. So he's retweeting something. Let me go ahead and hit refresh and see if anybody else is online here. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're, we're getting a conversation going here. Okay, and this is good. So we have Hi from Elkhart, Indiana. Cool. And then we have Josh Neff, who's a friend of ours. Uh, says, don't listen to the British buddy. I'm the sheriff. He's, he's in Kansas. Um, and so then uh, I asked, where are you located? And she's responded to both of us saying that he is not the sheriff. He's an outlaw, uh, which actually I would have to agree. Uh, I'll have to agree on that one. Um, so we go ahead and hit reply. And that gets posted. So you can see you can quickly get a conversation going here. Um, it's not always what you had for breakfast. Um, I will post a lot of tweets that are interesting articles that I find online. Um, hey, I'm reading this great article. Go check it out. Um, I will also post things kind of like a, I've done here is requests for help. Uh, does anybody know a good site for X? Um, I'm putting together a presentation. Here's a link to it. What do you all think? And P I, I get responses from all over the world with, from the people I follow and that follow me. Let me do another refresh here and then we'll kind of move on, see if we've gotten some other responses here. Uh, hi from my car, driving across Washington, listening to tweets. I, I don't know how he's listening to tweets. Um, I'm going to have to get back to him on that one. Um, so, you know, and now I'm, I'm hoping he's not texting while I think while he's I just driving. saw something yesterday somewhere about being able to listen to your tweets on the iPhone. Just yesterday. Wow. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to ask him how he's doing that. I'm going to have to look into that and, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get, we'll get back to that one later. Now, um, I mentioned that at symbol and notice I've now gotten some that have been responding directly to me. If you look over on the right hand side here, you will see at M Sowers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that and that's going to bring up all of the tweets that have been directed to me that have at M Sowers in them. So we have uh, NW, uh, Long Island, uh, London, England. She said the Queen's House drinking tea. Yeah, oh, okay. isn't that nice? Uh, <laughs> Mississippi State University Libraries. So, you, so I can go in and see these are just the things that people have sent to me. Okay. Now, what's interesting about using the at symbol, and this has changed recently, so Krista can maybe correct me. If it starts with at, say, M. Sowers, then I see it in my stream, but nobody else will. If it mentions at M. Sowers somewhere in the middle, mm. then it's public. So it, it's, it's really kind of weird. It depends on where the at username is located. If it's at the beginning, it's kind of like only to that person. But if it's mentioned in the middle somewhere, such as I was listening to at M. Sowers give a talk on Twitter, then that would be kind of more well, public. There used to be in the settings, I thought there was something that you could control which level you saw. Right, but it's not in the settings anymore. I think they just kind oh. of made a decision. So there, you might want to play around with that a little bit. But what I want to lead that to is this thing called direct messages. Um, now, I'm trying to think what direct messages I've gotten recently. This should be okay to show. Um, and I, <laughs> Krista's now laughing. Okay, these are good. You can send a message specifically to another user, and only they will see it. It's like a private message. So I can pick from a list of people here, uh, and I could pick CJ Burns, and I can say, this is a private message period and click send and what that's going to do is it's going to say hey I sent a direct message this is my inbox these are the messages I've received spy masters a game we won't get to that <laughs> and these are messages that I've sent to other people and we will see that here is this is the private message that I sent to her also there is a spam account in Twitter where you can report people for being spammers and I've been doing that a heck of a lot lately uh, so 
you've got this ability to kind of work through this system. Also, and I'm going to go back home here for a second. Um, one other thing, oh, greetings from Maryland, is let's say, okay, Memo has posted this, uh, I guess this Flickr, Flickr link would help, and I've got this little star over here. I can mark this as a favorite. I can say, hey, you know what, I like that. I want to get back to it later. It's kind of like bookmarking mm -hmm. a, a, a tweet. So that what that will get me is if I click on favorites over here, it will bring me up just the messages that I have marked as a favorite recently. So um, there you go. And I can get back to them and say, hey, what was that link? I wonder what, you know, why did I want to look at that? Or I want to get back to that later. So you can um, specifically bring that up. Now, I'm going to go back home again, point out a couple of other things in this interface. Um, and it looks like he's using an app called Twooner. Oh, your iPhone, yep. Hooked to the car stereo, no less. Um, wow. So you know what? I'm going to favor that because I want to look at that later. I think that's really Check interesting. That out. Yeah. And what you'll see here is we have the less than five seconds ago, and then it says from Tweety. And this one says from Seismic. And this one says from the web, and Krista has a question. So do you want to open up and see anything? Oh, yeah, sorry, we've got to hide see, um, the chat room and Before we move on to you're gonna go other things, stuff. Yep. does anybody have any questions, comments, anything about what we've um, described so far about Twitter? <laughs> yeah, we're kind of cranking along here. How to use it or anything. Anybody have any questions about it? Um, for you in a day, demonstrate how to mark spammers. <laughs> I like the use of the spam icon. Yes. Okay, really, really simple. In fact, I'll, I'll do that right now. Thank you for that question. Um, the first thing you need to do is you need to follow the spam account. So actually, let's before we talk about this Tweety, Seismic, and the web, we need to talk about following people. So yes. this, is, this is the one thing we've not done. So let's say, for example, I know there's an account out there called spam. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to twitter.com slash spam there is a user called spam. So I bring up their page. And you'll notice here it says following. That means I am already following them. I'm, what, I'm, what you would see is uh, I'm going to unfollow. Okay? And what you would see, you wouldn't see this yellow bar, but you would just see a button called follow. Okay? So if you were to create an account today, you would come to twitter.com slash msowers because you want to follow me. Maybe. You don't have to. <laughs> uh, but I'd appreciate it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click follow. And now, whenever spam posts something, it will show up on my homepage. Okay. Once I'm following someone, I can, and they've followed me back, I can now send them direct messages. Okay. So because I just unfollowed and refollowed, this may not work. But what I would then do is I would then go home. And I've noticed that somebody's got a spammy sort of account. Okay? So what I can do is I can go to my direct messages and I can send a message to spam. And what the instructions are is just username. In other words, I think this person is a spammer and then the spam people at Twitter will check it out. That's all you need to do for that. Okay? And that just actually started, I think, a month or two ago. That, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty recent. Okay? So... Um, if, um, so let's say I now know that there's a person out there called CJ Burns. So I can go ahead and go to Burrs, R, and I told you I can't talk and type at the same time. Um, so I go to CJ Burns and load that up. It should exist. And in fact, not only am I already following her, I have then turned on device updates, which means if she posts something... I get a copy of it in my uh, on my cell phone via a text message. If I decided I didn't want that, I would just say, "Oops, no, I I want to turn device updates." Um, you have to go in the settings. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there, but if I actually do this, I will be unfollowing Krista, and she probably doesn't appreciate <laughs> that. Notice her background there is the uh, 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 Batgirl was a librarian uh, image mm -hmm. there. So everybody you follow shows up in your timeline. Yeah, actually what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick somebody that Krista follows and I don't. So let's say I probably don't file, uh, is that a good That's person? That's the New Orleans. Oh, NASA. Okay. I, I don't follow NASA. So I've got along here, oh, Krista follows NASA. Okay, well, hey, this looks pretty interesting. Okay, I'll click follow. 
and I am now following NASA. And you'll notice it says here device updates off because I really don't want them sending me text messages. And this is where we can mention verified accounts too. What, why don't you talk about verified accounts? I'm not okay. too familiar with those yet. Um, you can see, if you want to air up there, yep. the, the very top of this particular one, it says verified account. Um, and this is something also relatively new, last six months or so, I don't know, that um, Twitter has um, instituted. Anybody can create an account on Twitter, and a lot of people are doing fake accounts, it's pretending to be celebrities or whoever. Um, and sometimes it's okay. The purpose of it is for parody and for having fun. Some places, some, pe some people didn't think it was okay, and some people wanted to, say, to show to the world, this is my real account, not someone else's. If you really want to be following the real NASA, the real whoever, do a verified account. And so people can go through the process of verifying their account with Twitter, and once they do prove that they are who they say they are, they get that verified account icon at the top. So that's how you can tell that that is the official NASA um, Twitter stream. This one is Darth Vader, <laughs> um, which is obviously, um, as you can see, not a verified account because Darth Vader is not a real person. But this is someone who, yeah, that's a really bad color scheme on their part, um, who is pretending to tweet as Darth Vader for entertainment purposes, for fun things. Um, so it does not get verified. Um, Did you read their bio? Evil, Evil orphan, orphan Annie. Annie. <laughs> uh, okay, if you find that funny, groan now and get over with. <laughs> um, right. So this is something that you can follow so you can see the difference. This is someone famous, quote unquote, but has not verified their account because Darth Vader isn't a real person. Yep. But um, just a good thing to notice um, if you are trying to follow someone in particular, see if they are verified or not. And then you know it's the real one. Also, a way to tell if something from a business or a company or someone is real, they will sometimes on their own web pages that you're using already or in emails they send you say, hey, we're on Twitter, follow us. Even if it's not a verified account, obviously you can trust from the page you're starting at to do it. Um, okay. That's how I got the one that you're looking at, the New Orleans um, uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau, I subscribed to them an email, and they just sent me a new one saying, hey, we're on Twitter now. Boom. I there signed up to follow them. Yeah. So um, that's also a, a good way to know if it is the real people who are um, posting it or not. Sure. All right. So we've talked about posting. I want to talk about a couple more ways of posting because one thing I found very quickly, especially when I'm, I'm surfing around the net, I read a lot of articles online, and I want to share these stories with, with my friends on Twitter. I, it, it was kind of annoying to have to, um, you know, have Twitter open in one screen, uh, read an article in another, um, switch back to Twitter, write something, copy the URL from the other screen, and, and go back over. So there's some ways you can actually make your life a little easier with Twitter. And one of which is called the Twitter bar, and this is if you're a Firefox user. And I, I live and die by this add-on in Firefox, okay? <laughs> what I've done here is if you look up towards the top, right above my cursor there in the address bar, you'll notice there's a little Twitter T there. So let's say I'm surfing along and I find um, a website that I'm really, really interested in, such as Twitter bar. And so what I've got here is I've got the URL and I want to I tweet that URL. Well, but what I also want to do is I want to say, I love Twitter bar. <laughs> okay? And include the URL. Well, now what I can do since I've added Twitter bar is I can just go over to that T, turns into a little plus. It tells me I have 106 characters left. And I click that, and it will say, Are you sure? And you know what? Don't confirm after this, please. Just do it next time. <laughs> click OK. It says posting to Twitter. And. Um, because this is not my computer, the first time you use this, you need to get your account and say, yes, I really want Twitter bar to have access to my account. And it says authorization complete. Okay, so let's try this again. Um, and, oh, sorry, I was on the wrong screen. So I, now it still says I love Twitter bar. So I'm gonna post that. This is posting to Twitter. Do, do, do. And it says post successful. So now if I go back to my Twitter page and I reload that, we should see there's my post. I love Twitter bar. So in other words, it's just I'm there, I write a tweet, I click send it to Twitter, and it's all done. That only works in Firefox. Okay. Mm. So what about those of you stuck in Internet Explorer? <laughs> which is most of us in this building, actually. Um, well, what you can do is you can use uh, a service called Twit This. And by the way, we all have links for all of this at the end of class, so you don't need to try to write down all these URLs. Twit This, one of the things you can do is you can use what's called a bookmarklet. And I've talked about these in other presentations before. I'm going to go ahead and go to Tools. And then I have to scroll down here a bit. 
and it says create a bookmarklet and it says twit this. And what I've got here is I've got my bookmarks toolbar open. I'm going to take this link and I'm going to drag it and drop it right up here. And this works in both Firefox, Internet Explorer, uh, Safari, Opera, Chrome, whatever browser you want. Okay, so it now says twit this. And so what I can do is now, instead of typing in my address bar, I'm on this screen. I can say twit this. Uh, I believe I will probably have to authorize this the first time again. Um, and it says, okay, well, I'm using, uh, I'm reading about twit this. I can change this. I can say uh, check out twit this. Mm -hmm. And I say, okay, twit this. And hooray, it says it worked. Okay, I didn't even have to authorize it. So I close that up. I go back to my Twitter homepage. I click refresh. And we get check out, twit this, and the link. Now, these links, you may notice what Twitter will usually do is shorten the link using like a tiny URL or um, a, a bit.ly or one of these services. And that helps you because sometimes just URLs can be longer than 140 mm -hmm. characters. So most of these services will allow you to uh, uh, automatically kind of shrink the URL that you're looking at to make sure it fits within the uh, 140 character limit. Okay. I do want to, I, we're going to get back to searching, but I, I kind of want to show you kind of the next stage. Okay. Everything I've shown you so far is on the Twitter website at twitter.com. Okay. I'm following 404 people. Now, people could mean individual people, could mean organizations, companies, services, whatever. Well, that can get a little hard to keep track of. <laughs> I mean, new stuff's constantly coming in. Um, some people you follow might be considered a little more important than other people that you follow. I, I, I hate to use the word important, but you know uh, the, the people that I work with, I want, want to make sure I kind of separate them out. So you know, if if they've tweeted something that I really need to know about, I, I can I can do those. And there's lots of different ways you can access Twitter without actually using Twitter.com. I've already mentioned that you can use it via text messaging. There are Twitter applications for the iPhone and the iPod Touch. Yeah, there, uh, yeah, Kenley was talking about one that actually reads you your tweets. I've really got to look into <laughs> that. Um, that's got to be interesting doing a road trip and just listening to random tweets coming into your. I don't know what that I, voice I, sounds like. Yeah, I, I got to check that out. Um, um, there are, if you have a Windows mobile cell phone, there are Twitter applications uh, that you can install. There are desktop applications you can install on your PC. Uh, Seismic Desktop and uh, TweetDeck right are, are actually used very well. In fact, here they're mentioning Seismic right here. And these are very powerful ways that you can organize your, how you're using Twitter. Krista, you use TweetDeck, right? Yes, Is, for the moment. Okay? Yes. Um, I'm using something very similar to TweetDeck that I'm going to show you. I'm using something called TwitHive. TwitHive pretty much works just like Seismic Desktop and just like TweetDeck, but it's web-based. So I don't have to be sitting at a particular computer. I can log into TwitHive from this computer, my computer in my office, my computer at home, and, and have everything be exactly the same. Someone else's house. Okay, someone else's house. <laughs> pretty much as long as I have web access, I can get here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign in, and literally, as long as you have a Twitter account, you can use this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and sign in with Twitter, and it says um, that's not working. Okay, let me just try something else. This is going to make my life really interesting if it doesn't. Uh, let's try reloading this. I might need to log, actually log out of Twitter to get this to work. Okay, reloaded. Let's try this real quick. No, I think it was that weird authorization that I was doing before kind of got a little funky. Basically, I need I need to have TwitHive ask Twitter for permission to access my account, which it should work. It's just TwitHive is being real slow. It's waiting. For it's waiting for TwitHive. Um, let me check the uh, chat room. Um, what oh, is the next to the hash? Okay, um, uh, let's come back to that. Can, can Krista, because you're in a little note. We, we will cover the hash marks, I promise. Okay, yes. so we'll, we'll cover that kind of in searching. 
All right. So we're hey, we're in my Twit Hive account. Awesome. Remember, I'm following over 400 people, so this, it's going to be a little hard to kind of keep track of all of this stuff. This is my Twitter account, but via Twit Hive. Um, uh, um, Tweet Deck also pretty much looks the same way here. Okay, what it does is it gives you columns and you can totally customize what happens in each of these columns. Okay, So for example, my first column here is called favorites. These are kind of like the people I know personally that I really want to keep track of what they say. So they show up in this first column and I can scroll up and down within this column to, to see what's in there. Then my next column I've called at M Sowers and basically this is going to be all of my replies. So if somebody sends something to me, mentions me in a tweet, it's going to show up in this column. And you can see all of the other the people and, saying hi yep, still. And we still, we're still getting more hellos. Uh, Montreal, Dryden, New York, uh, Matitsi, Wyoming, mm -hmm. uh, Baton Rouge, Nashville. Okay. Then my next column I've called organizations and famous people. <laughs> These are like um, Zappos Shoes, um, Tech Delight, Andrew Keen, authors that I follow, bookstores that I follow. You know, kind of like... Yes, I want to pay attention to what these places are saying, but I really don't want it all mixed in with the actual people I know mm -hmm. or mentions of me, you know, because I want to track what people are saying about me on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, scrolling over, I've set up a few more columns. Then I have the Nebraska column. And this is uh, people I know in Nebraska, uh, other Nebraska librarians, um, Lincoln News, 1011, Nebraska Tourism, the state of Nebraska, Krista. Um, you know, kind of my coworkers. I've kind of put them all in a Nebraska column. And actually on a widescreen monitor, which I have on my desk, all four of these columns fit perfectly. <laughs> so I don't have to be, do as much scrolling as you might think. Then kind of off the screen, I have a few others. I, you know, this is a particular friend of mine, so I like to follow what's going on with her. I have a direct messages column. Um, then I have a, a public library column, and this is actually a search result. Every time somebody on Twitter, whether I follow them or not, mentions public library, I get a copy. Yes, I admit that's a little insane. Okay, <laughs> notice it's really far off the screen. I mean, I have to get to it. But I just kind of like to get an idea every couple of days what people are saying about public libraries. And for you, for your own institution, you may want to have it search the name of your town or the name of your public library or your library and then you'll see whenever anyone is talking about your library or about your college mm -hmm. or about your town um, so you can track what people are saying and reply to them exactly. even if they're not following you already and you're not following them yet you'll see what people are saying and know someone had a good experience at the library someone had a bad experience at the library um, someone's curious about does the library do this and you can start reaching out to these people mm -hmm. out of the blue and say yes we do lend DVD and they lend for two weeks and come in and mm -hmm. see us, you know, um, and they may be like, oh, my God, they replied to me. Right. I didn't even know they were on Twitter. This is awesome. Uh, and yeah. then you get more people. It's this whole. Yeah. And, and I've actually done that. Random. I, I've, I've seen a couple of public library results where somebody was just really, really complaining about a bad experience they had at their public library. Mm -hmm. And I've actually apologized to them. I've, 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 just, <laughs> I've sent them a tweet back saying, on behalf of all librarians, I'm That's sorry. I mean, idea. you know, and it just made them feel better that somebody cared, if, if nothing else. And then I have an everyone column, which is all 404 people I follow, which which I almost never pay attention to. I mean, in some cases, I randomly go through it. But, you know, I, I do follow some people that I'm vaguely interested in, but I don't really know them. And so, you know, I can, I can kind of once a day kind of go through this column and, and see what's there. So, I mean, this and this automatically refreshes itself um, just every couple of minutes, or I can force it to, to say, hey, please show me, you know, what, what the new stuff is for a particular column. Mm -hmm. I can click new update and I can post right from here or send a direct message. I'm now posting from TwitHive and click update and it will send off my tweet. I can reply to people. I can retweet somebody because I thought what they said was interesting. Click reply. I can create a new channel which allows me to create a search or any you know new column that they have here and I can even do a search. Okay so on that Let's talk about search. And to do that, I'm actually going to go back to the Twitter homepage here. And we have over on the right-hand side, and there's my tweet. This is now posting from TweetHive, is we have a search box. You can completely keyword search Twitter. Okay. For example, 
that public library search I had. I can use quotation marks, public library, and click search. And what this is going to do is here's my real-time results for public library. And if we give it long enough, although this might not be the greatest uh, search to do it on, it will actually tell me that there are new results I haven't seen yet. Okay. Um, let's, let's try something a little more um, open-ended here. Um, uh, yeah. Do you want to do something that's trending? Yeah. Well, well give me a. Um, let's. Uh, huh. <laughs> you always can search for something. Let's just search library. How about that? We'll just we'll just do a quick search on the word library, and we'll say real time results for library, and here are the mentions for that. Now, hopefully, as I'm talking here, one of these we found new results live will show up. Um, now. One thing I want to point out to you, uh, over to the right of real-time results for library, it says save this search. This is pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and click save this search, and look what has happened if you look kind of in the green bar towards the bottom, okay, it now says library. It says quilt. It says pound NLA 2009. Notice it now says three more results since you started searching. Refresh to see them. So I click refresh, and it shows me the three new. And there's one for Marshall. I didn't even know Marshall was on. So you know what? I'm on Twitter. So I'm real quick. No, this is a real life situation. This was how Twitter works. I know Marshall Breeding. He's a very smart guy. I didn't know he was on Twitter. So what I've done is I've found his account. I'm going to click on his name. It's going to open up his page. I'm going to go ahead and click follow. And I am now following Marshall Breeding. Hey, all right. Okay, somebody you should really small pay attention world. to. Yes, very small world. And there's nine more results since I started searching. That's a very broad search journey. Oh, yeah, well, I, I wanted something well, that was going to show more. But if you see here over on the right, my saved searches, I can now say, well, okay, how about quilt? I did a search. What's the recent results for quilt? Then we have one here. I saved search for pound NLA 2009. And this was uh, someone's question. Notice no results. Not That's yet. okay. Not yet. All right. This is called a hashtag, and that's the, the hash mark, the pound symbol. What happens there is sometimes like when you have an event, such as Nebraska Library Association 2009 conference, <laughs> um, people get together and agree that while they're at the event and they're going to be tweeting about the event, they stick the hashtag at the end of their tweet. So the idea is that while people are at the conference, if they're tweeting about the conference, they're going to make sure they put pound NLA 2009 at the end. Um, it could be a real word. It could be a made up word. This is obviously a made up word. And the idea is that then through the searching, you can kind of organize and collect all the tweets about a particular topic. Krista? And what is also good and interesting about hashtags, they're not just for Twitter. People will use hashtags in Flickr, in blog posts, mm -hmm. in all sorts of things, and there are search and things that you can use that can search for any of these hashtags mentioned anywhere, um, if it is in some other service as well. Sure. Okay. Um, just to show you how cool this can get, um, this is somebody taught me how to do this. I don't look at this very often. Um, this is a search for library, okay? But remember I said that Twitter was location aware? So I've put near Lincoln, Nebraska, within 25 miles. Okay. So literally now, some of them you'll see are us. <laughs> but then we have here uh, somebody mentioning uh, library cards are free for residents of Lincoln and, and Lancaster County. So they mention the word library. They're tweeting from somewhere within 25 miles of Lincoln, Nebraska. Crafty Cash is also mentioning uh, library. Um, and there's Krista. And this is a hashtag that a guy in Lincoln said, hey, if you're tweeting about Lincoln, how about you add pound LNK? And what he's done, oh, can I remember this website? Give me, give me one sec here um, to show you what you can do with this sort of thing. I think it's called nlnk.in. And he's actually set up a website, here we go, that collects all of the tweets that mention the hashtag LNK. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now instead of searching through Twitter for mentions of pound LNK, you can just go to this website and he's pulled it in. And one thing I haven't mentioned, and by the way, for those of you who are familiar, all of this through Twitter, the searches, any of this stuff, completely available through RSS also. So if you want to subscribe to a search of, of Twitter through your RSS reader, you can easily do that also. 
So there's lots of things you can do here with the search. Um, I mean, especially if you want to know what people are talking about on a particular mm -hmm. topic. Now, this LinkedIn thing is based on the fact that people put that into their profile. Yes. That's where it's pulling well, that it's, info from. Okay. Yeah. You, the, the geolocation stuff in Twitter is a little interesting. <laughs> um, right off the top, it is going to assume that I am always in Lincoln because that's what I put in my profile. However, let's say I went to visit my parents for a week. What I could actually do is I could set a Twitter message that says L colon uh, one four one four six two six. That's their zip code. Yeah, that's their zip code. Or I could say Rochester, New York. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if I update that, what Twitter will now do is it will think I'm in that zip code until I say otherwise. So when I come back home, I would say L colon six eight five two two and click update, and it now thinks I'm back in Lincoln, Nebraska. That's totally cool. I never knew Oh, that. you didn't know that? No. <laughs> now, I actually use another service called BrightKite, which oh, I've seen people use I that, tell yeah. BrightKite where I am, and BrightKite then tells Twitter for me. But, I mean, there, there's all sorts of services oh, you that God. work with Twitter. I mean, literally, we're going to give you a URL for hundreds of links of things you can do with Twitter. Let me wrap up with one other thing you can do with Twitter. This is a service I use called Fuel Frog. And literally what it does is I follow Fuel Frog on Twitter. Okay? And then what I do is I send them a message when I fill my gas tank. And I so I say, so I'm on my text messaging on my phone, and I say, okay, I'm gonna send a text message to Twitter. I say at Fuel Frog, and then for the, like the example down at the bottom here, I tell it how many dials I've driven since my last fill up, how much I just paid for gas. Uh, or, and how many gallons I bought. And so what happens is Fuel Flog collects that information and allows me to then track the fuel efficiency of my car. <laughs> it's getting crappy. <laughs> yeah, well, and if you notice, this goes all the way back to October. Um, I, I can explain this. Um, I pretty much only drive back and forth to work in my car now, which is three and a half miles each direction. Yeah. So I get horrible gas mileage. Back in November, October, November, December, I would do long car trips to Omaha and to Colorado. Mm. And I would get better gas mileage. Now that my fiance is here with her newer car, when we, we go somewhere any anything. distance, we take her car. <laughs> so that's, that's right. So that's why I'm getting less uh, gas mileage. <laughs> but see, I know that because of Twitter and Fuel Frog. Mm -hmm. um, there's another one called Tweet What You Eat. Mm -hmm. And you can track what you, you can do, f food logs and um, your weight if you want to. I mean, there's hundreds of these services that integrate with Twitter. And it's this is amazing. stuff that you're just sending to these sites. It's not like you're telling the whole world. Yeah, it depends on how you do it. Yeah. Right, exactly. Uh, I don't, I don't, this or um, I, when I send a fuel frog, I actually do it publicly. I do it with an at symbol because I don't care what people know about my gas mileage. Yeah. Um, if I'm tweeting my weight, notice I'm not <laughs> showing you that screen. Um, that I send as a direct yeah. message. Right. That way nobody else sees it. Um, so there's, there's literally hundreds of these services mm -hmm. that, that allow you to um, pull this up. You also notice if you looked at my records here, you'll notice I fill my gas tank about once a month because I yeah. almost never drive anywhere in my car anymore. So anyways, that is Twitter in a nutshell. <laughs> That's Very a lot. Cool. I mean, that, that is literally a lot in, in just under an hour here. We have a few minutes left. Oh, yeah, um, and just wondering if there are any other questions. Um, we, if you want, if you want to ask audio, just like send a question mark via the the chat room. We'll turn your microphone back on. If you want to just ask the question via chat, mm -hmm. just go ahead and type that. Um, basically, I encourage all of you to sign up and to play with it. And don't sign the library up this afternoon. <laughs> sign yourself up. Play with it. I'm on Twitter, M. Sowers, Krista, C.J. Burns mm -hmm. is, is on there. Um, you know, follow us, see what we do, get the hang of it. Explore. It might work for you, it might not. Explore it first before you start using it for your library. Um, look for other libraries that are using it. You'll find lots of them, some that we follow, some that we don't yet, pick, we don't know about. Pick a hobby, um, do a search on it, mm -hmm. search on quilting or quilt, because I, I know we got quilters out there, <laughs> um, and find people who tweet a lot about quilting and start following them. You don't have to know people. Um, this is kind of, Aaron, what we're getting to with your question there. Um, <clears throat> you know, how do you find people? Search on topics. Search the word librarian. Search libraries. Um, ask. Um, actually, I, I did 
mention one other thing that you can do. When you sign up for an account, if you have like a Hotmail, a Yahoo Mail, or a Gmail account, it will give you the option of going through your address book in those services and see if any of your friends are already on and automatically following yeah, them. Yeah, can search for you. Um, yeah. You can do that. I mean, literally, especially if you're looking for, um, uh, and I'll get to your name question in a sec. Um, if you're looking for libraries, okay, and librarians, follow me, follow Krista, and then look at the list in the green sidebar. Go to our pages. Go to twitter.com slash msowers. Okay, in fact, I'll bring this up real quick here. And then right over here on the right, see all these little icons? These are all the people I'm following, and you can view all. See who I'm following and start following them. I mean, really. Um, when you oh, click okay. on view all, go ahead and click view, view all, all just to see. Yep. You can, and, you'll see more about them because they're on those little pictures. It's kind of hard to see yeah, who it is. Yeah, there we go. When you see view all, then you get the name of the of the person it is, um, possibly their real name, where they are, and their, um, this is new too, the bio, that wasn't always there, I don't know. Yep. But so you can see um, who it is that um, we're following, and then on the right-hand side under actions, you can then follow them as well if you think sure. it's something you would be interested in. And Rachel is mentioning, and I'm gonna back up here, there's a hashtag called follow a librarian. Mm -hmm. So okay. I'm gonna actually back up here and do a search for pound, Pound, follow. Oh, okay. yeah, I'm, I'm hitting the wrong keys. And so what people have done is uh, actually are suggesting librarians you should follow. Um, how do I see this using used in a K-8 curriculum? Wow. Uh, <laughs> in a curriculum? Yeah. There are... Oh, um, go ahead. Who's the one that they're just twittering, tweeting his diary? Oh, okay, yes, John you Adams, can, John Quincy Adams. You can Here's an example. think of things that are part of the curriculum and see if someone, like the Darth, Darth Vader one we had there, that's a fake person doing something, um, someone pretending to be them. There may be things out there where people are pretending to be famous people or historical figures. See if it's out there. Follow it for a while yourself and see if it's good stuff, <laughs> um, that they're doing it seriously, and have your um, the students follow that. Or like NASA, if you're doing a... Um, a section on um, space travel. Have them follow NASA. When the Mars the Mars rovers up on Mars, they're twittering actually, as as if it was the Mars Phoenix was twittering as if it was the 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 um, the, the, the robot the was robot tweeting. Itself <laughs> saying, I just landed, and you know things like that. So you can follow that. Mm -hmm. This one, um, Michael can explain about. Uh, this yeah, one, I'm, this I'm is the, a really cool. Thing I'm the American history. history buff here. John Quincy Adams uh, actually starting in um, August of 1809 was an ambassador to. Somewhere in Europe, I don't remember exactly where. Um, oh, Russia, sorry. Well, part of Russia's in Europe. Um, and so, and he kept a diary, a daily diary, and he wrote about one line a day. So what they're actually doing, starting this earlier this August, they are actually reprinting each diary entry on each day from the original diary. Uh, now, they might have to abbreviate a little bit, but he actually mostly kept it under 140 characters, believe it or not. Um, so this was his diary entry for today, and you can actually follow along on his trip of several years, I guess this is going to go. It'll keep going as long as it goes, It will yeah. keep going, and it will line up day for day, uh, actually, how they were doing it. So this is, this is yes, somebody present, pr pretending to be John Quincy Adams, mm -hmm. but they're actually his words on the right days. I mean, it, it's, it's actually very well done. So as much as Darth Vader is funny... Um, John Quincy Adams. This is actually his words. So, um, I would also get creative. You, know, you could use it. I mean, you know, uh, start that way, or find other teachers who are twittering and ask mm -hmm. them. I mean, I know librarians. Yeah. I don't know a lot of uh, school librarians, to be completely honest. But I know they're out there. I know they're using it. Um, so check it out. Okay, we are over time, so we are going to cut this off. Um, you wanna... Thank you all for coming. Do I want to? Um, let me see. Krista. Oh. Second. The, um, the links. Yeah. That's the URL at the top of the screen you want to write down. Delicious.com slash travel in librarian, no G, slash Twitter. And this is 243 bookmarks <laughs> related to stuff you can do with Twitter. Yeah. Um, Don't so, get overwhelmed. Yes. Please. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot, but that's good. You'll find things that are good for you. Um, 
this will be included this link also if you didn't get it written down that's fine when the recording of this goes up um, I will include this as well in that information um, thanks Laura we are very glad to be back as well it's just glad Encompass is back yeah it, it was a rough month or month and a half <laughs> yeah. of trying to figure out what we were doing <laughs> but we are back and we're back on schedule we've got um, two more sessions coming up um, if you do let me see the mouse um, I'm going to go back to the have any questions, um, comments, concerns, anything you want to know more about, contact Michael, or you can contact me too. I mean, we both do Twitter all the time. Um, and, you know, contact us after the fact, and we can answer any questions, help you along with things um, with using Twitter. Um, so thank you very much for attending today. Next week we, we have um, scheduled a tour of the new e-library interface that Susan Nisley will be doing for you. So I hope you will join us then. And I want to say one oh. last quick thing. If you do follow either of us um, in Twitter, make sure you put in your bio that you're a Nebraska librarian, and, and we will follow, we'll follow you back. You back yes. If you don't tell us that, we don't know who you are. So. Not, no. yes. <laughs> so. All right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.